We understand where this law came from. Where the law came from is because back in the day of Jefferson and Madison, that crowd, they looked at incorporation of the church as establishing a, a state church and as a violation of religious freedom. Therefore, we understand why we have this law, even though we understand the constitutional argument. Judge Moon, in his court opinion, stated, Plaintiff's motion, that is, Falwell's motion for summary judgment, is unopposed. In other words, the state of Virginia offered no defense against the incorporation of churches in Virginia. The state offered no resistance, no arguments, no appeals on the ruling. To the contrary, they offered their blessing on church incorporation. When the, when the case was filed against the commissioners uh, of, uh, actually just the one commissioner uh, on the, on the Lit, uh, Lynchburg Commission, this guy did never claim his, his opportunity to uh, say, you know, I'm a government official, I can't be sued. He did not claim, you know, I'm not the only guy on this commission. There's a whole commission here that needs to be included in this lawsuit. He never filed a response. So Falwell went to the court and filed his and filed his case to sue in order to be able to incorporate, and nobody responded. <laughs> One rather telling demonstration of the case is the fact that the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, joined the, joined the church as a friend of the court. <laughs> the ACLU helped defend the church and argued that the church should, after all, be incorporated. Yeah, you know, there is a certain amount of truth to the fact that one can be identified by their friends and their enemies. more to be identified by our enemies. Uh, in this case, Falwell tended to be more identified by his friends. Um, when the American Civil Liberties Union joins the church and says, yeah, we're with you, it's time to reassess your position. <laughs> <laughs> the judge, ruling uncontested, knowing that his ruling would not be appealed because there wasn't even a response file, Changed over 200 years of Virginia law, whose statesmen of the past warned that incorporation be setting up a state church. Listen to what John Lee said. John Lee said, The Church of Rome was at first constituted according to the gospel. And at that time, her faith was spoken of through the whole world, being espoused to Christ as a chaste virgin. She kept her bed pure for her husband almost 300 years. But afterwards, she played the whore with the kings and princes of this world, who with their gold and wealth came in unto her, and she became a strumpet. And as she was the first Christian church that ever forsook the laws of Christ for her conduct, and received the laws of his rivals, that is, was established by human law, and governed by the legalized edicts of councils, and received large sums of money to support her preachers and her worship by the force of civil power, she is called the mother of harlots. And all Protestant churches who are regulated by law force people to support their preachers, build meeting houses, and otherwise maintain their worships are daughters of this unholy mother. Pretty strong stuff. This was the opinion of the people who set up the law in Virginia that was overturned by Judge Moon. Benjamin Hoadley, or Isaac Skillman, who also was from that area, wrote I am of Benjamin Hoadley's mind, who was afterwards Bishop of Winchester. When he was His Majesty's chaplain, he told the King of England in his sermon upon these words, My kingdom is not of this world. That it, 
was not in the power, right, or authority of any pope, prince, or potentate, of any king, lords, or commons, of any bishop, archbishops, deacons, or prebends, of any vicar, clergy, or curates of any synods, convocation, or presbyteries, to make any laws for the Church of Christ, that the Church of God has no dependence upon the state, nor any human power or authority, but only on the power of God and his word, that it was a distinct kingdom from the world and has nothing to do with any worldly power. Pretty strong word. You see, we have come to a place where we have a difficult time recognizing the distinction between a church and a religious organization. I get calls all the time from from people who uh, pastors around the country, and those those fellows will call and they'll say, you know, they're long distance from California or Oregon or Washington, whatever, and uh, they'd like to know if uh, you know if I could just explain to them in five minutes or less this whole incorporation thing. <laughs> After uh, almost twenty years working with the law center, and a little over 3,000 hours worth of research and so forth, it's difficult to reduce it down to that five-minute time frame. And usually I just say to those people, well, it's real simple. If the church in the Bible did it, I think you should go ahead and do it. And if the church in the Bible didn't do it, I think you probably shouldn't, and you'll be fine. <laughs> and inevitably, somebody says, well, <laughs> they didn't borrow money. <laughs> I say, see, you're learning already. <laughs> but it boggles the mind that you talk to preachers and these pastors, you say, you just, I, I, we did a seminar years ago. I had about 30, 40 preachers there. and We did six hours worth. We got done with six hours worth of, uh, worth of teaching on the subject. And, uh, said, okay, anybody have a question? And the fellow sitting right down here in the second row, right on the end, mm -hmm. raised his hand. I said, yes. He said, uh, okay, after you unincorporate the church and, uh, and you know, you're unregistered and everything, I said, yes. He said, then who do you know, who do you like uh, register with? <laughs> <laughs> saying, well, you know, I think we'll start over. <laughs> Six hours and the guy wants to register with somebody. Please, let me register with somebody. Because there is a misperception, most of the pastors in America today, and this is a shame, do not know what it means to be a church. Most churches today if, if God died, they wouldn't know it for five years. <laughs> because they've got the programs and they got the this and that and the other thing. They're just going on their way. You know, they, they're, not, they're not spending enough time with the Lord to know if he's there or not. And we've got, the, we've got the program, we've got the plan, we've got the organization, we've got the entity. One of the reasons why we have corporations, we'll talk about this, uh, I think, this evening. One of the reasons why we have corporations is perpetuity. <laughs> I have to have an organization to keep this thing going because God can't handle it. There's a problem there. We had a situation in uh, Florida. I can never remember the name of the place. But uh, where the church down there uh, was incorporated, the pastor decided not to follow the rules to unincorporate Brother Warren. And uh, he decided he'd just sort of let the thing die. Well, three years into letting it die... Uh, somebody gave the church $25,000 for missions. 